What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Justin Ford Podcast, where I'll be releasing life-changing principles and valuable information focused on all things faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, and so much more. Let's go! What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Justin Ford Podcast. Super excited to be with you here again today. I hope you've been doing great since the last episode. If you are loving the show, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. And if you're really loving the show, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. And if you haven't followed me yet on social media, you can at the official Justin Ford. Again, at the official Justin Ford. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok X, which is former Twitter, and also here on YouTube. Got another exciting episode in store for you today, but before we get into that, I do want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is a team of professionals that believe everyone should be treated as if they live next door. The founders and team members have more than 150 years of combined loan experience helping clients all over the country choose the best loan program to help you accomplish your goals. Nextdoor Lending is currently licensed in over 24 states and has a team of over 100 loan officers specializing in helping you get the best rate and terms. So whether you're looking to refinance your home or you're looking to purchase your next home, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888-885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. And so guys, as you know, anytime I bring a guest onto the show, it's to share a story with you that can encourage you and inspire you along your journey. As you know, the pillars of our show are faith, finance, family, fitness, and health, as well as real estate. And today I've got an incredible guest on the show, Jill Janik. She is a health and healing coach with New Beginnings Nutrition. Welcome to the show, Jill. Hi, Justin. I'm so excited about your enthusiasm and your mission and vision here, and I'm so glad to be a part of it today. Yes, I'm so excited to have you. You know, we met a couple of months ago, Mm -hmm. and when we had the opportunity to meet, I got to learn a lot about you uh, regarding your story and things that you've gone through and how you've overcome so much and how really God is using you today, Mm -hmm. which is incredible, and I'm excited uh, to dig into that. And so, Health Healing Coach, New Beginnings Nutrition. Tell us a little bit about you and how you came along on this journey of becoming a health and healing coach. Well, the first thing I'd like to say that I want to give everyone hope because I didn't know nothing about nutrition. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about health. Mm -hmm. I was ignorant and I was deceived and I was just running around in circles. Yeah. I didn't even know what a protein, what was proteins, what was carbs, simple carbs. So I'm giving you hope that I had to learn from scratch, from the ground up. I had to do my due diligence. Sometimes that's the best way to learn too. Yes, absolutely. Because you're not indoctrinated by a lot of other things. It's by my faith in the Holy Spirit, asking him for guidance and direction and counsel. Um, Because at that time, uh, I had been diagnosed with lupus Mm. and fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, anxiety disorder, depression disorder, realizing a lot of it had to do with my childhood up until that point. I didn't really know that, yep. but I realized I knew what I could do and yeah. that was going to be starting to work on my health. I was yeah. realized I didn't have any principles or laws in order. Other words, just going and going and pretty much almost gone. Yeah. How yeah. old were you when you were diagnosed with lupus? Um, I was 30 years old. 30 years old. Yep. And how, how, do, how do you get lupus? Cause I know that's one of those things mm-hmm. that, you know, people, a lot of times don't know how you get things, but there's always a yes, starting point, yes. you know? Um, and I always believe it's not just a diagnosis and there's no cure. Right, exactly. Uh, because at first, that's what they would want to dictate. But that's I was in a whole new uh, venue of health on understanding medicine and all those things. But I really knew in my heart that it was really just the abuse of my body. Right. Because of what I went through as a child and yep. the things I did with addictions yep. and all the things you bring harm to yourself. Right. So I knew a part of it was me. And then generationally, I look back and seen the same cycles that were happening. So yeah. there was mindsets that were established in my bloodline. Yep. But basically with lupus is really when I was praying about it and then really started my journey, I realized after a time 
that it was your body was dirty. Right. Your body was toxic. Yep. Your body was filled up such at a capacity that your immune system didn't have the ability to help itself. Right. Because you've just bombarded it. Wow. Um, and that was through emotional stress and trauma. I suffered with a lot of fear and anxiety, but yep. it was a normal part of my life thinking that's who I was. I didn't right. even know that really the name of fear. Mm-hmm. I really didn't understand the name of worry and anxiety. I just realized I was always adrenalized right. and stressed yep. and always seemed like intimidated, apprehensive, fear of man. You know, a lot of things yeah. you just, you don't know and recognize till right. later in life. And I became a Christian and then I began to ask the questions. So, but lupus, basically when I went through the process, found it out I had viruses, mm. bacteria, fungus, heavy metals. Yeah. So all of these things that um, were in my body and also candida and yeast yeah, because of sugar addictions and yep. then just um, gluten, all, all of that. that stuff. And yeah. so you build up in your body and you're not resting, you're not sleeping, you're not doing, um, you're eating any kind of food just to survive because I was more of a performance driven person because right. I, that was my value came from, right. you know, more of, uh, you know, being that was who I was and not didn't know who I really was. Yeah. And if that makes sense. And so when you say like metals, you know, fungus, all of these things that might catch people off guard because in, in modern medicine or in, you know, just the everyday of life, we don't hear those terms. And yet pretty much every single person has metals in their body, Mm -hmm. some type of fungus, some type of bacteria, things Mm -hmm. that are going on in our body Mm -hmm. that we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so how did you begin to discover what was going on? Like what, what, rather than accepting the diagnosis, because unfortunately sometimes people just accept, oh, I have lupus and this is how it's going to be for the rest of my life. Or, oh, I have this. And they just kind of like, kind of like die, right? With, With their disease. What happened with you to say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to allow this to, to, Mm -hmm. to be, it might be what they're diagnosing me with, but I'm not going to just accept this. You know what? I I think that was the seven years prior that my relationship built with God, Mm -hmm. that I spent time in the secret place every day with the Lord seeking who he is. Mm -hmm. And I seen him uh, faithfulness throughout that time in my life, just becoming a born again believer. So I know that I was built in on the history of who he was, that I knew that his love um, and I knew what the cross accomplished more than just salvation. So right. it was like, I wasn't ignorant. Yeah. I wasn't deceived, but I had lack of knowledge really. And, but I had to seek it out because right. lack of knowledge were destroyed. So I began to seek God and say, you know, uh, just something in me said, I don't want to take medication. Everyone said, take the medication, this and that, but something, my body is so sensitive yeah. to any of those things. I yeah. just felt like it wasn't for me. Right. And I wanted to find the journey, even if I suffered a little bit, I'd rather suffer really and be able to have my mental capacity yeah. and try to have side effects or symptoms because I knew all of that too. Right. And I didn't want to have that. Yeah. So I began to seek out, um, you know, what's in my body, what's in my house. I started doing more investigation, examination of my soul, my emotions, yep. um, my past, my history, my generational. Yeah. And I began to see all these patterns that I, before I did it, I was too busy or God didn't open my eyes to the discernment of it at that right. time. It wasn't time for me to be healed yet, Right. but it was still in me. These things have been building up. Yeah. So I just, been uh, was saying uh, then I started going holistic approach Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's some setups that started happening that I was answering and then they started showing up right and I knew that was the open door to walk through I didn't know about holistic right I didn't know about natural alternatives so I came pretty much like I said from nothing discovering a whole new world that I never stepped into because my my world was basically I really wasn't in the drug world at all. And I'm not saying that as a condemnation for anybody because right. they can maintain and help, but you have to get the natural alternatives and your faith sure. working together if you're going to do medical. Yep. But so um, then I started going to a holistic doctor and then God would have me go into a conference. I started mm. my own education yeah. um, to get understanding because I wanted to get to the root system. Yeah. I wanted to say, well, if this is here and I'm not, I don't want it in my body Right. and I want to get well. So yeah. pretty much my whole life stopped, but it only began. Yeah. And so a lot of times when, you know, you get diagnosed with something they say, here, take this. Mm-hmm. And that just, that doesn't, that doesn't go to the root cause nope. that doesn't heal. It just basically, you know, kind of covers what's going on, but it never 
really discovers the the root cause. And so some of the root cause I have to tell you just coming to my mind is that you had a lot of ear infections as a child. So they wow. gave me a lot of medication mm. back then, a lot of uh, antibiotics. Yep. Well, they didn't know back in that day, I'm not that old, but you know, right. they not to give you probiotics. Right. So what happened was I remember having athlete's feet. Yeah. I remember having hives. Mm. I remember having urinary tract infections yep. as a, a child growing up. Yep. Well, then that time that you just dealt with it and then you kept helping the symptoms, more yeah. antibiotics more antibiotics right. yep. well needless to say that now that all caught up yeah with me because now i don't have healthy bacteria and i'm growing candida and yeast and you can even have parasites right and things because you don't have the healthy bacteria yep. that's in your gut so yeah. everything begins life begins in your colon and your, and colon. your digestion system and so, so and then it flooded out because i had leaky gut from stress yeah so leaky gut what means it goes into the bloodstream yeah so now that you're not supposed to have your food touch the blood now you got allergies right see all of this was a cascading thing that and i finally just, yeah it's like a, the end of itself. it's like a snowball effect mm -hmm. And it just all from just, my childhood. And, you know, a lot of times because we all experience stress, I mean, everybody has some type of trauma in mm -hmm. their life. Mm -hmm. Some are bigger than others. Right. But a lot of this comes from the food that we eat, right? Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. the food that we eat. It's the, the stuff we put on our body. It's the air that we breathe. Yes. Yes. And a lot of times, you know, obviously these symptoms can start to manifest, but a lot of times we don't even realize mm -hmm. we have candida or mm -hmm. we have yeast overgrowth or anything like that. Because mm -hmm. last year, I was actually diagnosed with a lot of those things as well. Mm -hmm. Leaky gut, you know, candida, yeast, fatty liver, all these things. Mm -hmm. And and I've been on this this kind of this journey to figure out how to heal myself, not just take a antibiotic, but I mean, mm -hmm. get to the root cause and heal. And that's kind of how you and I connected. Right. We met at a conference, you know, and we started talking and, you know, here we are, uh -huh. right? So you go on this journey, you're, you're discovering these things about yourself, your past, the trauma. At what point do you start to see things changing for the better? Mm -hmm. Well, I realized that even just the hope of knowing I was on the right direction, there's a healing there because right. there's an element where you're finding answers and you're going one day at a time. Right. But really the things that started changing is when, um, I have to say emotionally. Yeah. Because even though I was rebuilding the body, if I didn't get to the emotional then I would uh, maybe not be here either because right. the fear, worry, and anxiety have toxicity that right. dumps two to 3,000 toxins in your soul, right. affecting your mind, affecting your body, and also your adrenal systems, cortisol, your right. thyroid, yep. and all your brain glands. You right. know, In other words, flight or flight, if you're in that all your time, you're going to have cortisol, which is like an acid. It's like you're automatic. It's like you're built in steroid in your adrenal system. Yeah. And think about what steroid does to someone if they're bodybuilding. Well, it might look good on the outside. They're gone and they're like, they're rushed and you, yep. you look at them they're like like a, strong yeah. yeah but then all of a sudden the inside it's breaking down right because that's what we do too we take one addiction to another sometimes and then even not injecting ourselves with steroid right. but we have our adrenal glands that produce steroid right yep. so what we do is we keep going and going and it feels good and we get addicted to the adrenaline of it right. and then we live in flight or flight right. instead of actually finding that rest to turn it off so that right. was my life yeah because i had been you know your childhood traumas yeah i think i mean I think that also describes a lot of Americans That's and a lot I'm of people like they in, don't even in, in the world it. today. I mean, mm -hmm. I think we live in a fight or flight society, mm -hmm. something I've definitely struggled with, you know, mm -hmm. always on the go, especially when you're in real estate like me and you're yes. in sales. There's no like, all right, on Monday you start at eight and, mm -hmm. on, and then you end at five and you go home and you, and like you turn work off. Work is always with you. Yes. And because it's a commission based job, like you're, you're, it's go, go, go. And if you don't mm -hmm. learn how to rest and if you don't learn balance, you can, you can run out of gas. And mm -hmm. a lot of real mm -hmm. estate agents work seven days a week and never rest. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Yes, and it's not yes. just real estate. It's just, I think in our society today, it's, yes. we're yes. so used to this fight or flight mode. And so, so you're on this journey of healing, you're experiencing it. You kind of know that you're moving in this right direction at what time, you know, how long did it take for lupus to, I mean, does it, does it heal? Does it go away? Like at, you had lupus, you didn't like talk about how long you had lupus, how long mm -hmm. you fought the battle to where you no longer had lupus anymore. Yeah. I feel like it was something like I said, from the beginning, it can grow and develop yeah. into lupus. You know yeah. how, how I, long I had it, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I did get a blood work done and then it said I had it. Mm -hmm. And then I felt the inflammation of it. I felt the tiredness of it. I felt that there's times where I couldn't get out of bed. Um, and my family had to see this. Yeah. Um, and I want to cry because that's where you, as a mom, you don't want, you right. want to be the one. Yeah. Yep. 
And I'm already healed of it, but I realize it's God's grace. That's why I'm tearing up. Yeah, that's okay. Because the grace of God actually allowed my family and my husband and my children to come alongside me after I gave my whole life to them for all those years. Yeah. And now they're serving me. Yeah. And it's a humbling place yeah. of learning and of growing and of seeing God's grace working through the kids. Yeah. And, but you're still able to get going. You know, you have good days and bad days. Yep. Um, I could be going to the store and all of a sudden I got to turn back because I have an anxiety attack. Yeah. Um, you know, you're breathing, you're a hundred pounds, feel like you're a skeleton, you're losing weight, but you're, you're going through the, the resistance, yeah. you know, of the fear and you have to overcome that. Yeah. And I had to find rest. Yep. And my, finally in my life, or I had to find God in, in, a, in a way I never had found him before. Yeah. And I had to find a place of peace mm-hmm. and a place where I could receive his love and, and, and trust him yeah. through the process while he kept showing me. Yep. And then it took seven years from the time I started until the time I actually was, uh, 2003, actually it was five years, five years by the time I ended up coming out. But see, my excitement is... A lot of people will struggle uh, a longer time, but with me as a coach, I give hope to say what I know. I have the full feast. Right. In other words, I don't. You don't have to do the work that I did to suffer and sacrifice, right. but you yep. will have to still go through the process. Of course. And you will have to obey, and you will yep. have to discipline, self control, and you will have to find a consistency. Yeah. Because anything that you, anything that like anything you have to fight the good fight of faith and yep. there's a victory already been given by God, yep. Yep. but now we have to believe it and walk in it. And then there's a collective group of people yeah. that will be around you to support you. That's the powerful thing about a coach, right? Whether it's yes. your health or real estate, same thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I learned how to do now I can expedite the, the learning curve for a new real estate agent, mm-hmm. but yet they still have to put in the work. That's it. You know, my nephew, he's 19 years old. He's on my team he wants to be where I am. Mm-hmm, ten, you know, mm-hmm. t- I'm ten years ahead of him right. from a from a real estate standpoint. And I I told him, I said, Tyler, I said, listen, if you follow what I teach you, mm-hmm. and you trust the process, yes, you're gonna get there hopefully sooner than I did. Yes, yes. That's the beautiful thing about a coach. Yes. And so I feel like the word is acceleration. Because Absolutely. there's a acceleration, and we know in the spiritual realm, there's a redemption that Christ yep. brings them, and everything that's been lost or stolen from yep. the enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God comes to give life, and, abundantly. and life more abundantly yep. for us, and that's where he wants to bring us all into that freedom, Yeah, because he wants to uh, have a relationship. You can't have a the deeper relationship if you're sick, right. you're tired, you're, uh, you got fog, right. you know, you really can't enjoy the fullness of that life, yeah. and even your relationships are going to suffer. And, you know, when you understand what your calling is Mm -hmm. and what you're supposed to do, it's a way that the enemy can prevent you Mm -hmm. from really moving forward and Mm -hmm. and making an impact and a difference. And so, so lupus was only one thing (laughs) that you were diagnosed with and overcome. But before we get into that, we're going to break real quick Mm -hmm. for a quick message from one of our podcast partners. Are you a real estate agent looking to sell more homes this year and make more money but not sure how? The answer is simple. You just need to talk to more people. Being a real estate coach and teaching thousands of real estate agents all over North America and personally selling on average 100 homes per year, the thing top producing real estate agents have in common is that they use systems and technology to get in front of more people and have more conversations about real estate. And the system I use every day to ensure my success in real estate is Red X. Red X is my secret weapon for success in this competitive world of real estate that allows me to take seven to 10 listings on average every month. Red X provides me with the highest quality homeowner lead data, phone numbers, and industry leading communication tools to connect with homeowners actively looking to sell, giving you the edge to be the first agent in the door. Red X's triple line power dialer will boost your conversations connecting you seamlessly with more motivated homeowners ready to sell, allowing you to leave pre-recorded voicemails effortlessly for those that don't answer. But that's not all. Say goodbye to time-consuming neighborhood farming. Red X provides you with phone numbers and addresses for homeowners in your area in seconds, making prospecting a breeze. How about investors and landlords, pre-foreclosures for sale by owners and expireds? Red X is your all-in-one prospecting solution. Don't miss out on the opportunities waiting for you. Take the first step towards increased production, more listings, and long-term success. 
Visit sellmorewithredx.com right now to start your prospecting journey with the most accurate contact information on the market. And because you're a listener of my podcast, RedX will waive your $150 setup fee. Go to sellmorewithredx.com and start selling more homes today. All right, we're back. Uh And so lupus was only one of the things Mm -hmm. that you were diagnosed with and overcome or overcame. Now you fought that battle. You came out on the other side. You're victorious. How many more years was it until you received your next diagnosis and what was it? Um, well, it was 2008. My business, New Beginnings, was birthed. Yep, so you and birthed so your business Birthed out the of business yep. out of that. So I was on podcasts, TV shows, and I even had my own radio show in Detroit for four years. That's awesome. So, um, and actually helped in the African-American community, which every culture struggles with certain things. So yep. diabetes, blood sugar, blood pressure, things like that. So I really was great, glad to serve because God not only gave me natural cures and remedies for me, but also he began to show me all over health overall. Wow. So he gave me a lot of different, um, to help cancer, diabetes, blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, yeah. uh, whether it be irritable bowel, diverticulitis, leaky gut, like, cause that was all a part of me too. Yeah. So it wasn't just, I had all of these things in with lupus, Yeah, you know, and then, um, I really never struggled with blood sugar, blood pressure, but my husband actually had. So I was servicing him. Yeah. Then the doctor was shocked. Like, how do you do this? None of my patients ever get healed of all these things. They just take drugs. He yeah. goes, talk to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and then he really didn't need me until then. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but then, so 2008 to 2000, um, uh, 12, like I said, I was really gun ho because this was just fresh and I was yep. out there and I had opportunities and invites and things that was amazing. And then just servicing people through uh, churches, I would do um, uh, small groups and, and one-on-one coaching. So yeah. that was go and go, go. That's awesome. So 2012, then uh, what birth is women empowering women, which now God wanted me to service women in areas of health, wealth, yep. relationships, emotional healing and business. Yeah. So that was from 2012. Um, actually until, um, actually 2012. And then I got diagnosed then, and I was servicing all those for years, the hardest one, mental illness, people with diseases. Now they're all coming out of the other side. So I gave what I knew and then I learned new things. I didn't know for them that God gave me more things. Yep. But then 2017, um, everything seemed to be fine. Of course, life is busy and you go through life and things yep. happen. Yep. But then I, um, I remember feeling uh, symptoms in the area of my, uh, area of my rectum mm-hmm. and I'll just tell it like it is. Yeah, Cause sure. we're in a real, real yeah. world here yeah. now. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, I thought it was like constipation or, you know, I went to get my first colonoscopy. Yep. Well, um, when I came out, they said, you have cancer. Well, mm-hmm. I had already prepared myself. I feel like God already knew yeah. uh, he allowed it. But it was for a greater purpose because I always take it as okay. What do I do with this? Yeah. Of course, you have the fear and you have to you have to work through that. Work through that to really enter into a greater love of yep. understanding of His mm-hmm. vision and purpose for your life. And yep. it's not the end, only the beginning. Because I still didn't fulfill every purpose that He had spoken. Yep. So 2017, I said, "All right, well, I've helped people with cancer. Now I got to help myself." Yeah. But. I did actually get, uh, I let God led me to a coach yeah. so they can actually give me more revelation of things yep. I didn't know and yeah. things I did know. Cause when you're in that condition, you, sometimes you just don't always have your right mind. Yeah. It's like, uh, pray, it's like praying for somebody else's healing. It's easy to do that. Yes. But sometimes praying for your own healing, it's a struggle. Yes. Like it's easy to release faith for somebody else, Yes, but for yourself, it's a little bit different. So even though you're a coach at the time, you hire a coach to help you. What Absolutely. happened next? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I I actually uh, had to overcome some, like I say, the fear, but to stabilize myself enough to say, okay, I'm, I'm in it to win it. Yep. I'm an overcomer. I'm not overcome. I'm going to have a brand new testimony and this is going to send me to the nation because I realized that prophetic words that weren't the epic destiny yet. Mm-hmm. Like I was being faithful like Joseph in the process. Yep, yep. But yet now I'm going to come to the ultimate um, finish line yeah. through this, but yeah. didn't realize it would be it almost cost me my life. Right. And I would like birth an elephant in a sense. What I mean by that, it would be the biggest baby I'd ever have to birth. That would right. be his dream in right. me. Yeah. So uh, 2017, I began on a journey of just worship because in the glory of God, there was healing. And yep. I had to, because the battle was so raging that I had to hide away yeah. in the secret place. And I actually, nine months of incubation in my home, mm-hmm. establishing his presence, yep. establishing things, supernatural things happen. My husband now come in alignment. 
and more than he's ever had to believe what I had yeah. to believe the supernatural, to believe the business, to believe mm. these things are real because yep. he's a businessman and he's yep. going on a logical mind. Yep. He's like, honey, you just, I'll, you know, you do what yeah, you've got to do. I support you. But now yeah. it's like he, if he didn't come into this battle that I wouldn't be here either. So right. he had to learn. So, uh, new nutritional skills, new, uh, natural alternatives yep. and some emotional areas I had to focus on from, three years prior that was some trauma that I had. Yeah. Um, so just like a new beginning of a new wine skin or taking yeah. the old out, the old mantle off, um, and coming through a death process, like the Eagle, when you see yep. an Eagle, when they go through that malting yep. process, they look like they're dying. They're actually, you know, beating themselves up in a sense yeah. so that they can get the new. Yeah. Well, it was almost like God had me in the Eagle's nest Yeah. and he was going to now prepare me for new wings to fly. Yeah. Well, I had to get higher so I can see the dream. I got to get higher so I can see him and hear him and know him because my body was telling me I'm dead. Yeah. The devil was telling me I'm dead. And yep. then people around me. So I right. had to go up to hear him yeah. and to have his vision. So that's when these things yeah. started happening. And I know I accelerated within nine months Wow. through the pain and through the resistance, through the flesh, the world, and the devil. You might say all these yep. things I had to confront. Yeah. I overcame by the blood of the lamb in nine months. Nine healed months. a rectal cancer. And, and here's what's so powerful about that, Jill. And I've seen this countless times is... So many people accept their diagnosis mm -hmm. and die. Mm -hmm. They don't mm -hmm. fight. They stay in that place of fear. And we know what the Bible says, that fear is a yes. spirit. Yes. Fear is a spirit. Right and it's, it's, it's a spirit that will try to attach paralyze. itself to you and paralyze mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And we already know what fear and stress do to the body. Yes. They deteriorate it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but you decided not to partner with and, and align yourself with this diagnosis, right? Mm -hmm. you, you knew it was real, mm -hmm. but you decided to, like you said, elevate yourself above what you were feeling, which yes. is difficult because yeah. you feel it physically. Because you're feeling it in your digestive area where everything functions. Yep. And it goes right to your brain in that area. Yep. So it wanted to conform me to pain. Yep. It wanted to conform me to what I was feeling. Yeah. So I had to overcome my imagination. Yep of what the enemy was throwing at my feelings and my body to yeah. resist at such a degree that only God and his grace could help me. And, and, and yet everybody that I've seen, I don't want to say everybody, cause I know uh, not everybody makes it, but a big portion of people who decide to fight and take action can overcome cancer, overcome, you know, these other diagnoses because you know, God is greater than any sickness yes. or disease. People can be diagnosed. I mean, I've known people who had stage four diagnosis, mm -hmm. like you're going to die and they, and God heals them. Right. Yes. Yes. And I believe that it's a choice, right? Like if you just choose to partner with fear and, and, and being scared and worried, and obviously those are real human emotions, Yes. but, but you don't have to partner with those. Right. Mm -hmm. And obviously what you did and you overcame and, and, and in nine months, right? Mm -hmm. Nine Amazing. months. I mean, that, and that's a big battle. Cancer is like that one word that like right. you could, you could be diagnosed with diabetes and obviously there's medicine for that. You can be diagnosed with lupus and some of these other things, but that cancer one, mm -hmm. I think scares people the most. Yes. And so, so through this nine months, how did your life change? Well, it was like a repositioning of just being with God yeah. and hearing from him. Um, my husband's changed because he couldn't work for a year. Actually, he never had any jobs come in, which God allowed it. Yeah. So everything that we had invested in as far as money had to go to me because I was going to do extreme nutrition, extreme yep. supplementation. Yep. Um, also, he would have to come in, like I said, he had to change into a place after 25 years praying like God was going to make him Jesus to me. Right, yeah. <laughs> and he was already a good man, but I'm saying is what our calling is together. Yeah. So there was, but it was a grace and a healing for me to see him uh, come into that place where his rightful world was yeah. to fight for me and yeah. war for me and yeah. then to buy all the grocery shopping and then entrusting God for the finances. And yep. people would, through that time, people would give us uh, finances and uh, come over to pray. And then he'd meet my friends that he didn't even think that probably were crazy. Yeah. So now he's friends with them. Yep. So he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. In other words, to empower him yeah. to lay hands on me because wow. now he had to use his gifts for me. Wow. So he changed. And then the way I changed was coming into a place of, um, greater identity, mm. a greater intimacy, a yeah. greater authority and destiny Yeah, that I knew that my life wasn't over and I was going to fight with God. But if he's for me, who can be against me? Amen. And he's already birthed me out. I'm a new, like I'm 
his workmanship. Yep. I'm his bride. Yep. I'm bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, where his love casted out the fear, realizing the lion I fought, I fought the, you know, the bear, yep. and I had fought giants already. Now this was a big giant. Yep. But he's saying that I would have greater authority in the earth realm over the spirit of cancer. Yeah. See, this is about a spirit. He said it this is. wasn't an environmental cancer I had. Right. This was a spirit God allowed, like Job, to actually allow me to have it, and I knew that I was a Job, because he kept telling me, because he didn't want me to blame myself. Right. He didn't want me to look at me, what I did this, I didn't do that. Right. Because then it's condemnation and guilt, and you get stuck there too. Yep, you get stuck So there he too. told me a job, and I just began to hear him and see him in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. And a new way to obey him for what was coming in my destiny for the nation. Yeah. To be able to see people healed miraculously, which yeah. I believe miraculously when you overcome, yep. you can release miracles and yep. healing, signs yep. and wonders. Yep. But if But we still have to build a building. Yep. We still have to take care of your natural laws of your your house. Yeah. And that's where people want to believe in miracles. I believe in healing. But if I just believe in the miracle, which I I did, I was a miracle, but a progressive miracle. Yeah. I remember the day when I was in the shower and uh, I heard the Lord say Exodus 14. And I hurried up and got out and looked at it. And it talked about the Red Sea crossing over, that Mm -hmm. he was going to part it. Yeah. So, but I had to do everything as everything depended upon me. Yep. But I had to trust God as everything depended upon him. Yep. So my faith had to have have works or it's dead. Yeah. So I had to uh, know when to start, when to stop. Yeah. In other words, when yep. it wasn't for me to do, it was for God to do. Yeah. So I knew had to learn how to rest and how to war. Yeah. I had to learn how to um, hear him yep. and then walk in obedience and his timing of everything. Yeah. And so he, that's, that's how things had changed. But then um, the victory, he kept speaking prophetic words to me, yeah. to me yeah. and to my husband and all my family had dreams. Yeah. They're all dreamers. So yeah. they'd have dreams and then we interpret the dreams yeah. so we can know where mom needs to go next. Yeah. So God gave everything we needed to, to cross over as a family. And, and that's so powerful because, you know, I, I just taking it back, um, you know, a little bit of what you just said is like, you know, oftentimes, you know, we believe God for the miracle, right? Like, you know, you get diagnosed with lung cancer for smoking, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get healed. Are you going to keep smoking or are you going to begin making the different changes? And what I believe God had already had you doing was going down a path with lupus to make changes yes. in your life. Because, you know, like for me, for instance, you know, you know this, I had a colonoscopy last month, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, I had some health issues in in the year, and I've shared that on the show, where the devil started making me think, like, Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. have colon cancer, Mm -hmm. you know, because of different things going on. I had some bleeding and all this stuff. Yes. Thankfully, it was uh, internal hemorrhoids, uh, (laughs) which is not the greatest topic to talk about, but these are real (laughs) things, right? And when you see blood coming out of you like oh my you're gosh. like Please, yeah what preach the heck? It. it's like yeah and so like real. and then you try to get a colonoscopy and it's like oh yeah we can't get you in for eight months and it's like mm. so you're battling in yeah. your mind and yeah, in your you're emotions like, and, I be like eight months. and so so you know and this is when you and i connected because then we started coaching together so you're one of yeah. my coaches yes and you're and i was already on this journey of changing things because Doing you have what to, you can do you have to look at your body and you have to know what you should be putting in it, what you shouldn't, and not just food, but like you said, rest mm-hmm. and exercise and all these other things. Even drinking water, a lot of people and, are dehydrated. Dehydrated, right? And so I remember really struggling. And I remember one night, I really felt the enemy like really bringing this fear to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to die early because mm-hmm. my cousin died when she was 32 mm. of colon cancer. Mm. And I'm like, what about the prophetic words? What about my kids? What about all these things? And I remember going outside. It was an evening on my back porch. And the Lord said, whose report yes, thank are you, you for that. going I've to? <laughs> whose report are you going to believe? Who, who, yeah. who are you going to stand with? The fear that you're hearing. Now, yes. I wasn't diagnosed with anything. Right. Are you going to stand with the fear that you have? Or are you going to stand on my word and with me? And I said, Lord, I'm going to stand with you and on your word. So I go in for this colonoscopy and I'm like, well, you know, maybe they find a polyp or Mm -hmm. some inflammation or whatever. I go in and I wake up and they're like, oh, you have one of the best colons we've ever seen. (laughs) Squeaky clean. (laughs) You're a five out of five. You have no polyps. You have no inflammation. Literally, we'll see you in 10 years. You're great. And I'm like, (laughs) and I said, devil, you're a chump, honestly. That's it. That's it. Because that fear false evidence appearing real yes, can yes. literally come upon you and make you really feel like, like this is really going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so many people do that. And and you decided through everything you went through 
that this is not going to happen. And even for me, it's like you still have to make the right choices Yes. from from a natural standpoint of what you put in your body, taking care of your body and all these things to be pre- preventative. And at the same time, we still stand on the word, rely on the Lord and agree with him. There was a whole new alignment. Like I said, a new alignment for a new assignment, but a heart alignment because God wants to give me the fear of the Lord in a way I've never seen him. Like Job said, I heard you, but now I see you. Right. And I repent in dust and ashes. In other words, I had to get a greater revelation of that. So what I'm saying is that I had to overcome the fear because I can't fear sickness, fear yeah. death, fear no, Satan, no, can't fear the world. Nope. I had to get to a place where I could live or die yep. and actually and, be okay. and love him yeah, That's it. and know the healer more than I wanted the healing. That's right. what I happened. That's powerful. Son of righteousness, yeah. healing in his wings yep. and beams of light in his wings. So yep. I declared the word of God and elements of heaven yep. manifested as I spoke the word. They actually were in my body. Yeah. So I learned in a new way healing I've never implemented before. Yeah. Yeah. which I can use now in yeah. the actually in the natural and the supernatural yeah. and the word of God always being the foundation because yeah. the word of God, I was like a Rambo with a machine gun yeah. and I'm like a fear not be not discouraged. So I really had to do the work that is written. Man does not live by bread alone, but right. every word. Yeah. So there was a vigilance, not just a resolve of thinking, not fear, right. but the only way I could do that by a renewed mind. I love it. So when I had a renewed mind, my faith built up to a place where I never had to go before because yep. where I'm going now, I had to have faith yeah. that I never had <clears throat> before, but yep. I had faith to get me to that point. I had a mantle to get me to the point because I was doing faithfulness, obedience, yep. but then he wanted to take all of that off and give me new faith, a new identity I yep. had to have yep. for my new identity because yep. I had to be enlarged on the inside yep. to actually have the full capacity of the glory that was going to be released through me I love and it. on me. And, and, and most times, I mean, and it's just like a spiritual, you see it, it's almost like a spiritual formula, right? Like yes. before you go to your next level, there's usually a battle. Yes. There's usually something that you have to battle through mm-hmm. to go to that next level. Like you said with David, it was the bear, it was the lion mm-hmm. that prepared David for Goliath. Yes. Right. And David was able to approach Goliath. I'm sure, you know, he was at some, I mean, he had some type of fear or yes. something, even though it doesn't really talk about that, but like. He went and and took down the giant because he already seen God's faithfulness yes. before. So you had Luke. And I think that was the presence that made the difference. See, yeah. the, uh, glory of God always invaded David's battles yep. because of his worship and his heart. Because mm. it says he was a man after owned heart, but he obeyed him in all things. That's was good. he perfect? No. Right. But God honored him, and because the glory realm was all that he wanted, he said, "Your love is better than life." Mm. In other words, his he his life was God. Yeah. And so God gave him favor and blessing, but he still had to have the skill for war yeah see he still didn't just say okay god you're my great i love yeah. you and go but he had to learn he had to develop see david actually slayed the giant but yet he had to have character developed through those 20 years his right. last battle was saul right so that was his greatest battle to become king that was witchcraft that right. was death murder yep. now all of us even me going through that during cancer that's what happened to me there was yeah. a saul in my life yeah. and a saul attacking my children that I had to confront, but I had to love them, honor them, ple- yeah. and not talk about them, not judge them, criticize, condemn right. them. But it's all hurt and it's justified. Yeah. But I realized that, that I'm not Jesus then. Right. Because he gives mercy. When my mercy runs out, his begins. Right. So I had to get to a place of interceding for them to the mm. degree I got God's heart. That's good. And the mercy, actually, I believe the mercy of God, all the new heart changes he had to do in me. Not that I always had a wicked heart. Right. But it was enlarging my heart for the capacity of who the people he's going to send me to next. That's that could so be like that leaders that need help yeah and so uh it was amazing that he the lord but that care that david was sent on the throne because he had developed the character 20 years yeah you know he he was a man after god's God's own heart with a pure heart but he couldn't sit on the throne just with that right he had to obey god right and all things to have the character to keep him for that kingship yeah and overcome the greatest battle that's so and that's good. where I feel I'm at now. Now yeah. God brought me into that place, yep. but it almost killed me and almost killed David too. Yep. Yep. But he, he overcame. That's so good. And, Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. And so God takes us through those battles in order to give us victory so that we can use those as a testimony to help other people, which that's you've it. done. And there's more to your story. And so as I'm sitting here, Jill, what I want to do is I want to actually have you on again, mm-hmm. because I believe that, you know, looking into 2024 this year, right. Coming up. And when, When we think about faith, finance, family, fitness, real estate, health, health, right? Fitness and health. It's the, it's the theme of our show. And there's so many people in our world right now, Mm -hmm. the listeners 
that just need direction and help. Yes. And so I want to have you back on the show, but it, how can people get a hold of you now? Like if somebody's yeah. listening right now and they want to know more about you as a coach, yes. they want to reach out to you and connect with you. How can, how can somebody that's listening right now connect with you? Um, on Facebook, Jill Janik, uh, J A N I E C yep. Jill Janik. Yep. Um, also, uh, website, Jill Janik. Dot org. Yep. And also actually even text me 734-556-2184. Again, 734-556-2184. Um, even if you connect with Justin, he can yeah. probably refer you out. And I love that you say that because I want to bring the actual wisdom yeah. and the knowledge. So for example, diabetes, blood sugar, blood pressure, lupus, yep. what's the process right. that you can take? And we can't do individual coaching, but right. we can give you an idea, yeah. but then they can connect with me yep. personally one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. So yep. I do emotional healing, yep. mental health. Yeah. Uh, if you have mental health issues, brain issues, you want to yep. have your memory back, you have issues, uh, emotional or physical yeah. and also even uh, speaking on exercise. So I do a whole package, yeah. full feast. That's yeah. what, you know, the whatever I've I love it. been through and overcome, I'm going to give it full stop body shot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and guys, I will encourage you to reach out to Jill. Uh, mm -hmm. She is actually one of my coaches and we're working with me on some things, mm -hmm. which, uh, which I'm really excited about because we all have stuff. We all have mm -hmm. emotional stuff. We've all been through things. We may have some physical challenges and rather than accepting those challenges, rather than accepting those diagnoses, rather than staying stuck where you are, just like I've done, just like Jill's done, find a coach, mm -hmm. reach out to Jill and, and, and see uh, what Jill can do uh, to help and, and, and not just with Jill's help with the Lord. Cause you partner that's with it. the Lord I and, partner with the Him. and, and Holy that's, Spirit. and that's what it's all about. And so Jill, I really appreciate you coming oh, on the show today. So much. Definitely going to have you back because I really believe there's, like you said, wisdom in this conversation mm -hmm. and there's more to talk about. I'm, I would love it. And so thank you thank so you much so for coming much. on the show. I appreciate I, it. I'm excited. This was good <laughs> guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Justin Ford Unleashed podcast. I always try to bring guests on that can share things and encourage you with their story, but also create resources and solutions to help you with where you are. And so if this episode blessed you, go ahead and share it with someone. Hit the subscribe button here on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to reach out to Jill. And before we wrap up this episode, I do want to remind you that this episode is brought to you by my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. Nextdoor Lending is not just a sponsor of the show. This is my personal lender. This is who I refer all of our clients to. Nextdoor Lending has over 600 five-star reviews, a perfect A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. And so if you're looking to purchase a home and you need to get pre-approved, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. If you own a home and you want to take some cash out and or refinance, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending. And if you're a real estate agent looking for a great mortgage partner that you can work with in over 24 states, call my friends over at Nextdoor Lending today at 888 888- 885-3667 or visit their website at nextdoorlending.com. Two things that I always like to leave you with before we wrap up the show. Number one, it's not how you start. What matters is how you finish. And number two, with God, all things are possible. God bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.